All right, folks, this is as good as it gets. This is going to be one of those days I remember. I am proud to share with you the Audemars Piguet Jules Audemars 10 minute repeater and tourbillon, reference 26072 TI in grade 5 titanium. This is a 39 millimeter multi complication that is 10.4 millimeters thick, 45.8 millimeters from lug to lug, and 20 millimeters between the lugs. Remember, if you love this watch, email me directly, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. Let's take a look at this watch on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist. It's an absolute ball. The watch was built around the year 2000. It has an extremely high E-series serial number, and it was retailed back in 2008, so it's a very well-documented limited edition of 10 pieces. The timepiece sits low enough to easily fit underneath the cuff. It is a dress watch par excellence, and you can see as I roll through this down the barrel shot, there's plenty of clearance on both edges. The timepiece doesn't come anywhere near the edge of my wrist, and being as light as it is in titanium and as short across the wrist, less than 46 millimeters, I can recommend this for men or for women, large wrists or small. This is a King Kong watch for him and for her. Taking a quick look at the strap, let's take a look at the strap and the buckle. The strap is black, large rectangular scale alligator leather, semi-gloss, there's some bolstering to add volume, there's a lightly contrasting gray stitch in the black medium, and then a sheer cut side showing you the layers of leather used. You can see the bolstering, the stuffing to add volume, and then on the underside calfskin, it is an AP factory strap in outstanding condition. And you can see that there is a matching AP media blasted titanium logo style single fold deploying clasp. That's your insurance against dropping this fine watch while donning or removing at bedside. Welded lug construction. And this is tough to do in gold or platinum. To do it in titanium, grade five being lighter than steel, but also harder than steel, uh, it's really something to build the case create a little notch in the side, construct the lug separately, put them together, and then weld them together, and by hand, remove all of the evidence of the weld manually to create that sharp break. This is old school handcraft in the case construction. It's also nice in that it's a lovely nostalgic dress watch form. Uh, from a company whose non-Royal Oak products are often pre-owned bargains and somewhat undervalued, I love to see how much you can get in a watch like this that originally retailed for $400,000. It's a handsome array. Vertical satin finish on the lug flanks, longitudinal satin finish circumferentially around the case, uh, polished lug hoods, polished crown, polished bezel, conical bezel. You can see the case back is also satin finished. Rolling over to the bezel, you can see it's all of high polished contrast with the case. It's like a silver halo framing a dial of rose lathe, not stamped, but true hand guilloche. Executed with a rose lathe, you can see it has a lovely Cote de Soleil or sunburst motif. The hands are slightly off-center, being somewhat uh, biased toward the top of the dial. They are the origin point for the sunray motif, so it's a little off-center. The hands, as well as the Roman numerals, which are appliqué, they are made of white gold, along with the AP logo, so they will never tarnish or oxidize over time. You can see there's a Watchmaker's 4, uh, a lovely sunray motif with a sunken hour track, and then a little bit of a cutout around the uh, tourbillon. It's the tourbillon with a fired blue leaf hand doubles as your second sub-register. A lovely silver or opaline matte finish, not too reflective, not too gaudy, and then a tourbillon bridge that is entirely black polished on its top and then mirrored with lovely anglage on the edge done by hand, both top and flanks. You can see that it's a one minute tourbillon beaten away at 21,600 vibrations per hour. It is free sprung for precise adjustment and durability against impact, and then it uses an overcoil hairspring shaped by hand so that the hairspring develops concentrically in any physical orientation with respect to gravity, uh, thus ensuring that this is a tourbillon with chronometric intent, not just aesthetic intent. It's adjusted in five positions too, just like a chronometer would be. Uh, you can see the tourbillon carriage is fully hand finished in spite of being crafted of titanium in its own right. Uh, it is entirely hand finished, very difficult to do on something like a case, even more difficult on tiny mechanical components for a tourbillon. Now the watch does include a 10 minute repeater, which means unlike a conventional minute repeater, which sounds the hours, the core quarters after the hour and then the minutes after the quarter, this repeater will sound the hours, the tens of minutes after the hour and then the minutes after the last 10. So if it is, for example, 151, you're going to hear one chime, you're going to hear five double chimes, so five times 10, and then you're going to hear one more single chime, so 151. 10 minute repeaters are rare and this is one of the few. Flipping the watch over, we'll talk about the movement, but let's first just talk about the basics. The way this is finished, look carefully. Série limitée, numéro, tourbillon, répétition, minute, jour de mort. All of that 
It's a mouthful in French, but it's also freehand engraved. Number 10 out of 10, this is the one from the series to own. But look at each of these characters engraved by hand with no margin for error. You make a mistake, you start again with a new case back. These are not drilled or stamped figures. All of them were hand engraved. This is a hugely handmade and hand finished watch. Now I'll also mention being an E99000. This watch was made around the year 2000 and the sale of the watch was in 2008, so there is a little bit of a disparity, but it's well documented by the case code. Audemars Piguet alphanumeric serial numbers were up until recently sequential, allowing it to easily date the era of manufacture. Inside the case, caliber 2882, 10 minute repeater, 1 minute tourbillon, 21 6 beat rate, 5 position adjustment, 32 joules, manual wind, 48 hour power reserve, free sprung with an overcoil hairspring. As you can see, uh, Cote de Genève, even on the spindly thin bridge that helps to mount the bottom of the tourbillon. You can see the jewel sinks feature the same anglage as the edge of the bridges. There's engine turning on the underside of the tourbillon carriage, and all of the wheels feature satination with beveling on their spokes and inner circumference. In other words, folks, this is as good as it gets. This is a timepiece that has no water resistance, but then again, you've got a Royal Oak offshore for that. This is a watch that is moisture and humidity resistant only, as virtually all minute repeaters are. Reach out to Team Oslo at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.